During the early stages of the Stalingrad battle, the Red Army often resorted to horribly costly frontal assault tactics, in which hundreds of men were mown down running blindly across open spaces. Chuikov, as commander of the Stalingrad defenders, quickly realized that this tactic would not win the battle and important measures filtered down to the front line from his headquarters. The most famous of these innovations was that of hugging the enemy, staying within 50 meters of the Germans to obviate their application of aerial bombardment and artillery fire. It was this measure more than any other which turned Stalingrad into a close quarters cauldron. Yet the Red Army infantry also refined their defensive tactics considerably to impose far higher costs upon attacking Germans. The secret to the Soviet defense was its multidimensional aspect. Individual strong points were heavily reinforced physically and humanly, with every room floor, window, and pile of rubble turned into a position for active all-round defense. Supplies of ammunition, food, and water would be stockpiled to enable the strong point to endure repeated attacks without resupply. Crucially, however, multiple strong points were linked through command relationships which means several buildings might have a single headquarters coordinating their attack. Communication trenches and interlocking fields of fire, the latter including anti-tank guns and often tanks dug in as fixed gun emplacements. Such strong point arrangements created a defense in depth that drove the German attackers mad with their obstinacy. The Soviet infantry also developed greater efficiency in offensive tactics. Like the German storm detachment, Soviet storm groups were formed with a similar operational outlook. These groups were divided into three elements – assault group, reinforcement group and reserve group. Chuikov himself later explained the composition and tactical purpose of each of these elements. Assault group. Their job was to break in and take the building. Each assault group had six to eight men with submachine guns and five to ten grenades, knives and sharpened spades. Collectively, these were always under a single commander. Reinforcement group. Once the commander of the assault group signaled we are in, the reinforcement group would move in from different directions. Once inside, they would capture firing positions, set up, then block any attempted enemy interference from outside. Given their role, these group had machine guns, submachine guns, mortars, anti-tank rifles and guns, crowbars, picks and explosives. They often included sappers and snipers. The reinforcement group came under the command of the commander of the storm group. The machine gunners, anti-tank riflemen and mortar gunners entered the building first. Their assistance followed with ammunition and food for one day. The men occupied the center and upper floors to cover the approaches to the building. Once established, they occupied further firing points in front of and on the flanks of the building. When the building was in their position, they entrenched adapted existing fortifications, built new ones, and dug communication trenches. And finally, the reserve group. These formed the basis of new assault groups, prevented enemy attacks from the flanks, and if necessary, blocked any counterattacks. The dynamic similarities with the German offensive tactics are notable. Where the Soviets innovated was often in the timing and tempo of their attack. Nighttime assaults were common, launched by surprise without any preparatory fire, and German survivors remembered the nights as one of the most fearful 
and disorienting periods of the daily cycle. The operational pressure imposed upon the Germans was also locally relentless, adding attrition at the psychological level as well as in terms of casualties inflicted. What is also important to note is that the assault groups were not purely composed of Red Army riflemen, but also contained groups of sappers, essentially combat engineers, as demolition specialists to support each assault. The sappers would also be proficient in converting captured territory into a defensive strong point. The Soviet infantry and Stalingrad became hardened street fighters, but their lives still tended to be short and brutal. As both sides learned the skills of urban combat, they honed them to a high degree, the battle became as much about tenacity, attrition and survival as it did about frontline tactics. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and support my channel on PayPal. Details in the description box.